Well, ahoy there, cruisers, and welcome on board Royal Caribbean. Now, we're going to be doing something very interesting in this episode. Royal Caribbean have completely changed their menus in the main dining room. Brand new menus, and we're on a nice long cruise, so we're going to check out lots of them. And we're going to give you our honest and unbiased opinion. So let's do this. Prepare to eat. So welcome to the main dining room. We're on our first night of a 12-night cruise on board Symphony of the Seas. And we're going to show you all of the brand new menus in the main dining rooms because there has been some very drastic changes and big changes that haven't been made for years so we're going to check it out we've got our menu so i'm going to have a quick look in it and make my choices let's get eating shall we i'm excited for this episode well already i've seen the first change it's the menus themselves they are very streamlined a lot thinner and a lot smaller and a lot lighter too that's probably good for the crew so the reason that royal caribbean have made these changes is because they want to improve the speediness of the service personally we have never ever had a problem with the speed of service on a royal caribbean ship we've sailed with them so many times on so many different ships has never been a problem one thing that has been a problem in the past is consistency of food we could order the same dishes and one dish could be very different and be prepared in a very different way and not as high quality so we're excited to see if the changes are good. Happy to see the bread basket has not gone anywhere and I can confirm the bread is very good. Already it feels a little bit rushed. We spoke to our server very, very quick. No messing around with anything. It's bam, 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 bam. Put your order in, put your order in, put your order in. Order dessert at the same time as well. So you put your orders in for all three courses. We both went for four courses, so two appetizers one main and one dessert. The menu has vegan and vegetarian option in each course as well. It's very clearly marked on the menu, which is fantastic to see. They also marked other intolerances like gluten-free and the server did ask if we had any allergies or any food intolerances, which is good. But do note that the classic menu that was on Royal Caribbean before has completely gone. Now this is a bunch of dishes, appetizers, main courses and desserts that were available every single night no matter what the menu is. But they have completely gone now so we can't have French onion soup every night or apple pie a la mode. So for my first course of the new menu I went for the lump crab cake. First impression is the plate is a little bit smaller, that has shrank as well. It's hot, it's quite a loose texture, but really flavorful actually, and I really like the hollandaise sauce. And I've went for the tomato or tomato soup, depending on what side of the pond you're on. That's not what I was expecting, it's very good. It's not like a creamy tomato soup, it's like a regular tomato soup, but really good flavor, nice croutons, pretty damn good. Nice start to the meal, I'll say. We're definitely noticing a ramped up speed in service. Very, very quick. We just finished our first course and our second course was here already. I went for the shrimp cocktail. Four big pieces of shrimp with a cocktail sauce on the side. This actually looks like a pretty good portion, actually. Quite nice. Is that a good shrimp cocktail? And I went for something super basic for my second course, a Caesar salad. Let's have a taste, shall we? I mean, it's a salad. It's not going to win an Oscar or a Nobel Prize. It's a piece of leaf with some sauce in it, but as far as leaves go with sauce on them, this isn't bad. Main courses have came, and I went for the chicken sag curry. Had many a curry on different cruises, so I'm excited to see what Royal Caribbean has to offer. Nice and hot, that's a good start. Really flavorful, actually, and <clears throat> has a little kick to it. That was a little cheeky little spice there in the background. In terms of flavor, absolutely delish. Really like it. So I went for the southern fried chicken. It looks like a lot of chicken and it comes with corn. Pleasantly surprised, guys. I really am. Very good indeed. Finally, dessert time and I went for the famous Royal Caribbean key lime pie. Creamy, lots of lime flavour, a little bit at the bottom. As you said, it is a little smaller now, but it's still a great key lime pie. Actually really delicious. So good, good first start to the cruise. And I got the peanut caramel bar. On first looks, it is a little bit underwhelming. I was expecting like a juicy piece of chocolate bar with lots of caramel and peanuts, but hey, what can you do? Let's have a try. It's not looks that count, it's what's inside. So let's have a try, shall we, guys? No, it's not bad, it's not great. Maybe I ordered the wrong dessert. I just wanted to try something a bit different. Am I the only one who thinks there should be a calorie refund for things that you didn't really like? But on the other hand, and sorry vegans, because mine was a vegan dessert, I've just found out. I mixed it with some ice cream and it tasted pretty good. It just needed a bit of cream. Sorry to all the vegans. Overall for this first meal, pretty good. Can we see cutbacks? A little bit, not too much so far, but the food has generally been very good. The service has been great as well. And everything was really hot as well, which was great. 
Anyway, so we're going to have a look at some of the different menus that you're going to experience on your cruise. So tonight is Italian night in the main dining room and lots of the stuff looks very good. At the top of the menu there's always a recommendation with three of the top dishes and as we said before you can buy an extra three dishes as well. Main lobster tail for $16.99, chop skill filet mignon for $19.99 or the surf and turf for $34.99. That is quite expensive, I have to say. So starters all look okay, if not a little bit basic. The main courses, a few of the stuff on there are not Italian and there isn't much choice as it is. The pan-seared filet of sole, wouldn't say that's really Italian. New York strip steak, definitely isn't Italian. And spiced lamb kofta with crispy poppadoms and raita. That's a Turkish slash Indian dish maybe. Very, very odd because you only get sort of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven choices. And at least three of those are not Italian, which is odd. Some of the desserts do look Italian though, but we'll let you know how it all tastes. That's the most important part, right? Looking through the menu already, day two, I am starting to miss the classic menu because there is some stuff on here that um, I'm not keen on. So for the starters, nothing really does take my fancy. And having the favourites, you always know that there's something there that you will like. So I could have had the French onion soup. If I didn't like any of the main courses, I could have had the salmon or any of the classics. Meal number two, already starting to miss the favourites. First course, I got the fried polenta, which comes with a spicy sauce. Oh, blow my neck, I nearly broke a tooth on that bit. Apart from that, flavour's really good, very hot, nice and tasty. And I got the arancini balls, another food in ball form. Let's see what it's like. We had some in um, Jamie's Italian the other day, so I can compare. A bit mushy, very hot, mushy, but with quite a nice taste to be fair. But yeah, I'd like them to be a little bit more crispy, but other than that, pretty good. And you might, you might see something very similar about mine and David's dish. Same plate, same sauce, same side. It's exactly the same dish apart from David has plenger and I have balls. I think you can see some cutbacks there. Next up, I got the garden green salad. Looks lovely. I will say though, it is like the Walmart of salads. Actually tastes really nice. And to be fair, it looks better and tastes better than the salad we had in Jamie's Italian. And I got the minestrone soup, which was very nice indeed. It wasn't too hot, but the taste was very good indeed. I do feel like everything shrunk a little bit, like all of the plates and all of the bowls. Might just be me. I might just be growing bigger and everything's getting smaller, but who knows, but it tasted good. I had the vegan spaghetti bolognese, nice big portion, and I was quite nervous about this one because it said it had tofu on it and it had the tiniest, tiniest little bit of tofu crumbled on the top with no flavouring. So I don't get the point of that. But apart from that, actually, it tasted really, really, really delicious, but very basic. It was essentially pasta, tomato sauce with a bit of veg. That was it. Could make us at home in 10 minutes. And it was also cold as well. But the flavour was really good. I finished it all. I got the chicken parmesan, guys. It must have been sat there for at least an hour because it was so dry. Now, I know Italy looks like a boot. The chicken tasted like one. It was so stringy and hard. And the tomato sauce is so basic. It's literally like a tin of tomatoes with overcooked spaghetti. It just was not good at all. Very, very basic. I've got to say, so far, we were hoping because the menus were a lot smaller, there'd be a lot more consistency and better taste. But so far, we haven't seen that, but there's still plenty to come. Finally, dessert time. I went for the chef's recommendation. And I guess what's the most famous dessert Italy is known for is the tiramisu. I have to say, presentation looks a little messy and the flavor is very, very bland. It doesn't really taste of anything and it's incredibly sloppy. Doesn't taste like a tiramisu, unfortunately. Yeah, mine doesn't taste of anything either, very strangely. So I got the lemon tart. It looks really lovely. The presentation is fantastic. And I did eat it all, I've got to admit. I've got this horrible habit of just eating things even when they don't taste of anything. But in full honesty, I ate it all. It just didn't taste. It, didn't, it just tasted sweet. There was no lemon taste whatsoever, even though it had like a lemon layer in the middle there was just no taste of lemon but it, it was pleasant it wasn't horrible it, it was just not lemony enough for me i like my lemon hard so throughout our 12 nights on board we tried lots of different themed menus the food wasn't necessarily bad just often cold and underwhelming and some of the themes were very strange and very repetitive lots of dishes were similar and made with the same ingredients this felt like there wasn't as much choice as there appeared what do you think about these new menus? Hit that subscribe button and let us know in the comment section below. We'd love to hear from you.
Well, hello everybody and welcome back. We are on Royal Night tonight. That is the posh gala night where they do their best menu. So let's have a little look and we're going to let you know exactly how it is. I'm excited for this one. Lots of very posh things on the menu. So we've popped our orders in. First impression of the menu is that they're all a little bit random. So we've been on the ship now about 10 days. So we've got to experience various different types of menus and things. There is lots of repetition though, which is one thing you need to keep in mind. So on lots of the menus, you'll find Caesar salads and shrimp cocktail almost every single night, which doesn't leave you with many other choices. And some nights there hasn't been a hot soup as well, which is a bit of a surprise as well. But lots of the menus are very, very random indeed. So you'll be having an Italian night and it'll have a random Asian dish like a curry or something on there as well which is very odd indeed. So yeah, there isn't that much choice some nights. Definitely less choice than there used to be. Things like the apple pie. Oh my gosh, apple pie a la mode. I used to love ordering that and I haven't seen it on any menu at all yet. Maybe we've missed it when we were on a speciality restaurant or something like that. But overall, I would have to say the menus are a little bit random and some of them don't make sense. Like tonight's menu is a little bit all over the place. I'm not sure exactly what we should order. Obviously you have the lobster, this is the one time you can have the lobster for free. It is always on the menu every night for an extra $16.99. But do bear in mind recently Royal Caribbean made a change where if you want to order more than one lobster on the Royal Night, you have to pay for it for an extra $16.99. So if somebody else on your table doesn't want lobster and you, more, and you want more than one, our top tip is to get them to order it as well as something else and you'll get as much lobster as you want treat yourself lobsters vile though i don't like fish so but david does so he's going to be trying it when it comes to dress code most evenings there isn't really a dress code we've seen people in shorts t-shirts polo shirts shirts as well but tonight on royal night it is formal evening but it's not very formal i'd say most people are just sort of looking a little bit more fancy than usual there's nothing really set in stone you can come in shorts if you really wanted to. Nobody's stopping anybody. And to be honest, I can even see people in t-shirts and hoodies currently at the moment. So it has been relaxed a lot over the years. So when booking a Royal Caribbean cruise, you have two different types of dining. You have the traditional set time dining, which there are two sittings, one at 5.30 and one at 8 p.m. So you can pick between one of those sittings and you'll be sat on the same table every single night in the same main dining room or you can also book the my time dining now this is a more flexible type dining you can choose to eat any time between 5 30 and 9 30 pm but one thing that we do recommend is that you book your times that you would like to eat every single night you can do this before you get on the cruise on the cruise planner or the royal caribbean app because if you don't do this you may end up waiting a while for a table there are two lines when entering the main dining room. One for people with reservations with My Time Dining and one for people without reservations. Now, if you have a reservation, you're going to get into your table much quicker. But if you don't have a reservation, it's going to be a bit slower. But you do have more flexibility. I mean, the fact you've got a book now does take a little bit of that flexibility away. A few years ago, you would just walk in and pick any time you wanted, but it does get busy now. Personally, I think we'd pick set time dining because you get the same table and the same crew every single night so that's quite nice and they get to know what you like and what you don't like there is one more caveat as well some of the things do sell out so set time dining the early dining or the late dining time depending on how early you book your cruise they can sell out so you'd have to go onto a wait list once you get on board the ship to see if that time is available for example when we booked the only thing that was left was 5 30 pm which is far too early for us so when we got on board, we came straight to the dining room, spoke to the maitre d' and he had a look at what times were available and booked us for 8.30 every single night. So that's fine, it worked out okay in the end. But if you do want to make changes to your dining, do it as soon as you get on board the ship to avoid any disappointment. Yes, it's time, the French onion soup time. I've been waiting all cruise for this. Unfortunately, there isn't any classics anymore, so you can't get this every night. So you do have to hold out until it's on the menu. Oh, that is deep, freaking delicious. Tastes just as good as I remember. Super hot as well, super cheesy. Oh, I love it. I can't believe I've never had French onion soup until I came on a cruise and now I'm addicted. 
and I got the onion tart for my appetizer and it looks really good. It's really sizable. We do like sizable food, don't we? We like food that looks a bit substantial, shall we say. Oh, that is actually very good. Nice and hot for once as well. Super tasty, loving the caramelized onions. They're like caramel goodness in my mouth and I'm here for it. Lovely little tart, nice crust as well. As Mary Berry would say, it's got a good bake, good start to the meal so far. Looking forward to the rest of it. I also got the French onion soup. After peeling back all of the layers, and there were lots of them because of that lovely cheese. I don't know why, but this dish just makes me feel emotional. It puts tears in my eyes. You know, like crusted onions. I've got to say, I like it shallot. Absolutely delicious, really hot, really tasty, really wonderful. Lots and lots of cheese. I'm just so sad it's not on the classic menu every night because I would literally order that every night because it is one of my favourite dishes. Very good indeed. I also went for the salad, which is an avocado and uh, fruit salad. Actually really tasty. I don't know if the avocado goes with it so much, but the fruit part's really nice. Good little counterbalance to the French onion soup, which was very rich. So main courses of came. I didn't really fancy anything on the main menu, so I went for the cheese tortellini pasta. Looks pretty big and pretty nice, I've got to say. Let's have a taste. Guys, it's stone cold again. I've sent back probably about six or seven dishes because they were too cold throughout this cruise and I'm just sick of sending them back now. It's almost becoming a bit of a, a joke, if you know what I mean. It's not just warm, it's, it's cold. It's stone cold, the taste is nice, super tasty. It doesn't need any more flavoring. Really nice pasta as well, super al dente. I don't think I can, I honestly don't think I can be bothered to send back another dish because I don't want to wait because we've got more entertainment tonight and I don't want to miss it. So, oh well, once again, bad execution. Yeah, I've got to say, I can't get past the fact that this is cold. Still got to make a joke about it though, right guys? Always look on the bright side of life. Could be at home cooking for myself. And I went for the famous lobster tail. I have to say, first impressions, if I paid $16 for this, I would not be happy. It's a very small piece of lobster, but it is included on the main dining room. It's well cooked, but mine's cold as well. My rice is absolutely stone cold. It feels like it's been in a chiller. Lobster's lukewarm and the other vegetables are also cold as well, unfortunately. So I think ours has been, took the scenic route maybe, outside in the chilly weather. So obviously on all cruise lines, we've had cold food and it does happen quite a lot. You've got to remember, this is mass catering. It's a lot, a lot, a lot of people in here. We were just hoping that the new menus, which were designed to make things quicker and less choice as well, which means that the chefs don't have to cook as much different types of food, would make it a little bit more consistent. But unfortunately, that's nothing we're seeing. I got the um, red velvet cake with a cheeky scoop of ice cream on the side. Full of flavour, nice little bake. And it goes really well with the um, ice cream as well. I got the classic, which is the baked Alaska. So this is something you'll usually find on the big gala night. And yummy, it was really tasty. Nice and sweet. Neapolitan ice cream, love the different three flavors. Very good indeed. Quite small, but a perfect size for us because usually we're too full to finish it all. Yeah, pretty, pretty damn good. Yeah, just to say, if you did want another one, absolutely nothing stopping you. You can order two if you like. I'm done. That's enough for me, thank you very much. Oh, where do I start? Oh, hello guys, welcome back. We're here at the Taste of the UK night. So this is one that we can really, really judge. It's gonna be our final meal that we kind of review. Yeah, I'm a little bit shocked again. You've got the shrimp cocktail, escargot, that's French, my dears. Mozzarella cheese sticks, that's Italian, and a garden salad, treat yourself. I mean, of course, there's fish and chips on the main course with Yorkshire puddings, but fettuccine alfredo, butternut squash curry, and New York strip steak again. So you're seeing a lot of repetitive things on the menus. That's one thing that we've noticed. But yeah, I don't know why they're doing themed menus if it's not going to be truly themed. And I'm really not enjoying the fact that I've only got two choices from other nights because lots of these things have been on every night. So we're going to order and see what it's like, shall we? It's not been great so far. Hopefully a UK menu can save things, but... I don't have the best faith. Just to mention, we went for lunch today in the main dining room. Oh my gosh, first time in almost 100 cruises that we walked out of the main dining room. The food was awful, it was absolutely horrendous. I got a chicken sandwich and it was absolutely freezing. And David got salmon with some kind of Bernays sauce. I have never seen anything like it before. He didn't eat a bite, it was so dry. All the sauce had separated on the plate and the other half looked like somebody had vomited all over it. But we didn't walk out about that because we sucked it up because we're British. 
after we'd finished our meal, we waited 40 minutes and nobody came back and cleared our plates or gave us dessert, so we, we just left. That says it all, doesn't it? It's incredibly disappointing and not at normal Royal Caribbean standards. So no idea what's going on this cruise ship, but it's dreadful. That's one of the worst meals we've ever had on any cruise ship, let alone Royal Caribbean. It was truly MSC standard. David dropped the salmon accidentally, it bounced off the floor and slapped him in the face. Anyway, I'm gonna get back to a taste of the UK menu. It's about as British as Madonna's fake accent. I got excited, the bread course came. Unfortunately, it's about as stale as Nicolas Cage's acting career. Oh, I nearly broke a tooth on it. I don't know if you can hear that. That's not just hard, it is absolutely stale. It looks like it's been through a washing machine or something. Look at the state of it. Another, another 10 minutes and that'll be a crouton. <laughs> True story. Honestly, I don't want this to sound like an endless moan because that's basically what it is, guys. As we said, the servers are very pleasant, but I have no idea what's going on. We've been in here 44 minutes now. Still have no appetizers. We ordered about 30 minutes ago. The table behind us came in 20 minutes after us and they've already been served and they've got the same things that we're having so not sure what's happening because when it does get to us it's freezing cold every time we don't ever usually take it further but we probably are going to complain to guest services because it really isn't acceptable it's not acceptable for us because we paid to go on this cruise and we paid our hard-earned cash we work hard to go on these cruises and things so we paid it and you guys pay it hard as well so if we can do anything to make things better for anybody we'll do it so just disappointing guys just incredibly disappointing i feel very deflated that it's it's almost like we dread coming here every night which has never ever happened on a royal caribbean cruise before super super disappointing i'm genuinely disappointed and a little bit heartbroken because we always recommend royal caribbean and now it's can we do that anymore i got the goat cheese tart as my first starter honestly bland it was hot though which was good but had no flavor to it at all and the teeniest, tiniest little bit of goat's cheese. Now, I do know goat's cheese is a very subjective flavour because it is quite strong. But the rest of it had no flavour whatsoever. Yeah, and I went for the most British thing on the menu. Mozzarella sticks, said no one. Well, maybe if you were to take away after a night out. They're actually very good. And oh my gosh, they are hot, which is fan blooming -tastic. It's all we ask for is warm to hot food. But yeah, they're very, very tasty indeed for mozzarella sticks. Pleasantly surprised. I wasn't expecting so much flavour, to be honest. They're very, very nice indeed. By golly, Mary Poppins, you do produce a good mozzarella stick for the UK. So for my second start, I went for the shrimp cocktail. Now, this is a very British version of a shrimp cocktail. When you get shrimp cocktail in the UK, and especially in the 90s, it was the teeny tiniest little shrimps with a sauce that's like tomato ketchup and mayonnaise mixed together memories and childhood flashbacks every single fancy dinner had this as a starter it tastes like the 90s i'm a child again listening to ace of base and the spice girls and i got the potato and leek soup now it looks a bit weird it's got like a weird like top on it where it looks like it's separated let's have a taste shall we it's absolutely cold like not just warm it's cold so that's what the top is probably it's probably separated and being sat under a heat lamp for maybe like 45 minutes and this is what is weird because we've been waiting for it for ages as well so there's kind of no excuse it's it's freezing i'm a bit borderline over sending food back now because i hate sending food back it feels wrong as well because you do start thinking about people who don't have enough food and stuff but it's it's just bad guys it's not very good i mean i'm gonna eat it anyway but it's just bad so of course i went for the very british fish and chips now, I'm not going to be too harsh on this because obviously I'm not expecting fish and chips like we have at home. I'm going to compare this to like Norwegian's fish and chips. So far, I've got plenty of fish and it looks like a nice big portion. So my fish is super hot and it actually is very well nice. It's like little fish goujons, nice lot of batter on there. The rest of it though is absolutely freezing cold. My mushy peas taste like they've been chilled, but they've got a good flavour. The chips are okay as well nowhere near the best fish and chips i've ever had but for a cruise line fish and chips it's pretty decent and i went for the sunday roast dinner so it's roast beef with some potatoes vegetables and yorkshire puddings good old yorkshire puddings i make these at home seriously it's stone cold again this is ridiculous guys like twice in one day i'm tempted to walk out again because there's only so much you can say and then it, if it keeps coming out the same like there's just no point and i hate confrontation i really do i don't like 
complaining that much, but it's just very, very cold indeed. The taste is really good, so the beef tastes really, really, really nice. The gravy is really lovely as well. The potatoes are completely inedible. They're like little hard pellets, and the Yorkshire pudding's undercooked as well. It's really cakey and really thick and raw in the middle of it as well, which isn't really nice. And the broccoli's just been completely obliterated as well. Terrible disappointment, but hey, what can you do? I had a taste of one of David's chips, and they're really, really lovely. But I think for me, it might be pizza after this, because not good at all. How they can serve every single course, freezing cold. And I'm not just talking about warm. I'm not really petty like that. If it's just warm, that's fine. But it's cold, like it has a taste like it's being in a fridge. We're still very privileged to be here. I know it seems like hashtag first world problems, but we just want to be honest. Ping our hard earned cash, like you guys do as well. We've got to be always honest. And we're going to be honest with you, whether it's good or bad. Ben, do you not have realised that's two full courses that you've barely ate anything of and send them back, but they've not once asked you if you actually liked your meal or not? It's bizarre, yeah. So I left everything and they've not asked if I want anything else or if I didn't like it. It's, it's bizarre. I feel sorry because the guys are really lovely, but they just don't seem to know what they're doing. The dessert, we got a, a traditional British trifle. It's got layers of cream, it's got jelly, it's got strawberries, it's got beef, it's got potatoes. This is in Friends, David. Yeah, Friends references, I'll get that. Pretty good English trifle, I do have to say so myself. Tastes very nice. Well, what on the seven seas is this? Because it certainly isn't sticky toffee pudding. Sticky toffee pudding in the UK, it's a thing and it's amazing. This is a dry slab of cake that's freezing cold and has no taste whatsoever. I basically ate all of David's trifle, which by the way is really, really nice. That's a pretty good trifle to be fair. Very odd with the tiniest bit of caramel sauce on the side. And when I say the tiniest bit, I mean like a drizzle, a little drizzle. And who wants a drizzle on their cake? They want a blooming fountain, don't they? Anyway, that's it for this meal. Let's go and sum things up, shall we? I think you know what's coming. Well, to sum it up, like I said, I think you know what's coming. I'm not going to go into it for ages because you've just watched us eat for blooming hours. It very much was a huge disappointment overall, both the service and the food. Really weren't up to par with what we've experienced on Royal Caribbean before. Cruise lines can always be hit and miss. You can always get the odd cold dish or the odd dish you don't like, but this was like, 60, 70% of everything we were given was either freezing cold, tasteless, too sweet, too salty. It just wasn't good. Every menu was a bit strange. Not a fan of those new menus as well. Really missing the old classics and things like that. We think that the previous menu was far much more superior. And the fact that their excuse was to get the service down to 60 minutes, 90 minutes, that's not working either. We've had some of the longest waits we've ever had to wait for meals as well. Very slow service waiting 45 minutes to get our appetizers and things like that. So overall, a huge disappointment. We don't like doing videos like this. We really don't. We don't get any joy out of it because we love sailing with Royal Caribbean. But there you have it in cold, hard facts. I'm not going to lie to you. We're going to tell you exactly what it is, the good, the bad and the ugly. And a big thank you to all of our patrons as well. You can find out about becoming a patron in the description section below. And in return, we give you loads. So extra episodes, behind the scenes episodes, ad free videos, so no annoying ads, and you get to watch our videos before anybody else does. So that's it till next time. Happy, Happy cruising. cruising.